May Christ, the light of our world, enlighten our hearts with love.
Good morning and welcome to the United Parish in Brookline. It is a joy and a pleasure to welcome you once again to worship here on YouTube as we create this sacred space together. Because we believe that no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are most welcome here. We are glad that you have come to this worship today. Today we're going to do some centering on justice and what it means to respond to our call to justice that is a part of our faith, reaching way back to the prophets, the matriarchs and patriarchs of the Hebrew faith, Jew Jewish faith, as well as our Christian faith. You'll notice that there are some links um, in the video description below. There's a link for how you can contribute to this morning's offering collection. There will also be a slide shown in worship um, with some other options for that as well. There's also a link to our virtual visitor card. If you are new to worshiping with us, we invite you to fill it out and let us know a little bit more about who you are so that we can reach out and more fully welcome you into our community. We also invite you to follow along with our order of worship. Um, there's a link to the PDF in the video description below and to participate in worship via the chat to greet one another, to pass the peace, to offer up prayers. Just keep in mind that the chat is public. We also encourage you to like and subscribe to this YouTube page, to share it on any of your favorite social media handles, uh, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. But for now, we invite you just to put all of that aside and to take a deep breath and to remember the goodness of God as together here we invoke the power of God, the love of God living in our midst. I invite you to take a moment with me now just to center ourselves and to take in a big deep breath. As I often suggest, you might want to feel your heart or feel your pulse. And just remember that you are a living, breathing human being made in the image of God. Take a big, deep breath, remembering the creator who gave you life and sustains you in that life. As you feel the rhythm of your heartbeat, take a big, deep breath for Jesus, the anointed one who lived and breathed on this earth in human skin, just like you and I do. And another big deep breath for the Holy Spirit who lives and breathes among us still. And I invite you just to cast your eyes back over this past week and remember the ways in which you were especially good when you were perhaps more loving, more thoughtful, when you were more generous and kind, when you helped bring more justice into this world, more generosity. Remember those moments. You can even give yourself a pat on the back for them and thank God for working through you in those moments. We're aware that we all have times when we get out of sync with God when there are ways that we need to keep trying harder. And that's why we come back again and again to this worship, to remind ourselves of the values that God holds dear, that God wants to live through us. And so I invite you to pray with me our centering prayer of confession. Loving and compassionate God, to you all hearts are open all desires known and from you, no secrets are hid. We confess that we have sinned against you, opposing your will in our lives. We have denied your goodness in one another, in ourselves, and in the world you have created. We turn away from the harm that enslaves us, the harm we have done, and the harm done on our behalf. Forgive us, restore and strengthen us, we pray. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name.
for all these prayers said aloud and for those heard only in our hearts. O oh God, in your compassion, hear our prayer. And let the people say, Amen. We believe that God loves us just as we are and also loves us enough to see and help us change. That we can stretch in new ways with new beginnings each and every day. If you believe in this kind of love and this kind of forgiveness a little bit, or if you believe it with your whole soul, I invite you to say amen. Confident in God's love and God's forgiveness, we're invited to share that love and forgiveness wherever we go, and we do it starting right now with a holy greeting. The peace of Christ and the love of God be with you always, and also with you. Peace. From the prophet Isaiah, wash yourselves, make yourselves clean, remove the evil of your doings from before my eyes. Cease to do evil, learn to do good. Seek justice, rescue the oppressed, defend the orphan, plead for the widow. From Jeremiah, thus says the Lord, Act with justice and righteousness and deliver from the hand of the oppressor anyone who has been robbed. And do no wrong or violence to the alien, the orphan, and the widow, nor shed innocent blood in this place. For if you will indeed obey this word, then through the gates of this house shall enter kings, kings who sit on the throne of David, riding in chariots and on horses, they and their servants and their people. But if you will not heed these words, I swear by myself, says the Lord, that this house shall become a desolation. And from Micah, with what shall I come before the Lord and bow myself before God on high? Shall I come before him with burnt offerings, with calves a year old? Will the Lord be pleased with thousands of rams, with tens of thousands of rivers of oil? Shall I give my firstborn for my transgression, the fruit of my body for the sin of my soul? God has told you, O mortal, what is good. And what does the Lord require of you but to do justice and to love kindness and to walk humbly with your God? the wisdom of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray together. Loving God, as we listen to the prophets, as we absorb their words, and as we listen for how you would have us be in your world. May the words of our mouths and the meditations of all of our hearts be truly acceptable in your sight, O oh God, our rock and our redeemer. Let the people say, Amen. Amen. We've just heard from the prophet Isaiah about how we are called to cease to do evil, to learn to do good, to seek justice and rescue the oppressed. And from Jeremiah, to act with justice and righteousness and deliver from the hand of the oppressor anyone who has been robbed. To no violence to the alien, the orphan, the widow. And one of the passages we most love, that from Micah, that we are called very clearly and very simply to do justice, to love kindness, and to walk humbly with our God. Another one of our favorite passages of scripture comes at the end of Matthew 25, when Jesus, who's anticipating his crucifixion, tells his anxious disciples a story about how we're going to be judged at the end of our lives and thus how we should try to live our lives right now in the present moment on this earth. In it, he says that whenever we see someone hungry or thirsty, naked, sick, or in prison, we are to help them, to give them food, drink, clothing, to visit and take care of them. And in doing so, he echoes the prophets of Israel and their regular calls to take care of those who are most marginalized and forgotten in society. I'm grateful that we have a commitment and legacy here at the United Parish for following this charge from Jesus, 
through our annual Thanksgiving meal when we feed hundreds of our neighbors who would otherwise go without this special occasion, or our Thrifty Threads clothing shop that sells and at times even gives away reused clothing, to our support of the City Mission Coat Drives, or big support for the Brookline Food Pantry, which we're currently expanding, or the Greater Boston Food Bank's Walk for Hunger, and our mission-giving team's support of dozens of worthy organizations, locally, nationally, and internationally. This is all good and honorable work, for which we have many reasons to be grateful and to keep on doing. And as Christians, it's essential that we understand the importance of both charity and justice in living out our faith. We've talked a lot about adaptive challenges versus technical challenges over the last couple of years. As a review, technical challenges are problems where we know exactly what skills or resources are needed to fix the problem. You have a leaky pipe, call the plumber. She has the know-how and the materials that we need. Charity is one of the ways that we address the immediate technical challenges of injustice. Your friend doesn't have enough money to buy school lunch. Well, maybe your mom can pack you an extra lunch to give to your friend. Hundreds in the community feel lonely and hungry on Thanksgiving? Well, we can provide a warm meal and even warmer conversation, treating all of our guests as the dignified, worthwhile children of God that they are. Charity is crucial work, not only because it addresses immediate needs, but also because the barrier to entry is low. If you have extra, you can share it. If you can go without in order to help someone else, give it a try. If you have time or talent, there is a slot for you to fill. Adaptive challenges, however, require systemic change. When we look at an adaptive challenge, we may not even know what we would need to learn in order to solve the problem. We just know that it requires us to adapt and change. Justice is an adaptive challenge. It involves the larger, longer range work of changing the system of understanding clearly who has the power, building relationships with those power players, and affecting policy changes that will have lasting consequences. Justice work notices that children are going without lunch and works with power players to change the economic landscape such that families always have enough to eat even when they fall on hard times. Throughout American history, The Christian emphasis on justice helped inspire many social changes, like the abolition movement, or the progressive era of the early 20th century, and the civil rights movement. In taking seriously the calls for justice from their faith tradition, people developed the tools they needed to make longer lasting systemic change, to get involved with politics, and to influence policymakers. And out of it came laws that have had lasting effects for decades the Emancipation Proclamation and subsequently the 14th Amendment, fair labor laws, the Social Security Administration and other features of our social safety network, voting rights legislation from the Civil Rights Movement. But as we've seen throughout history, that without vigilance, the work of justice is always under attack and the threat of erosion. We have seen over the last 50 years, the widening economic inequality in the US. In the year that I was born, 1989, when the baby boomers were reaching their early 40s, wealth in the United States was distributed fairly evenly across generations with each adult generation controlling about 25% of the wealth. Now, the generation currently hitting their early 40s, the millennials, only has about 4% of the wealth. They hold 2% of the equity compared to the 55% that their baby boomer equivalents hold. And this doesn't even begin to take into account the way that the evils of racism and sexism map onto our economic landscape. This past year of the pandemic has highlighted this inequality as well as our nation's complacency and even complicity when it comes to institutionalized racism. Power protects power. That's how it's always worked. Frederick Frederick Douglass reminds us that power concedes nothing without a demand. It never did and it never will. Jesus and the prophets understood this very well, which is why they spoke out regularly and so clearly for justice, even when it put them in danger. Our job as Christians is to courageously continue that work, 
to look out for the needy and the vulnerable and to hold our political leaders accountable for doing the same. There is an organization in Boston that helps people do this in faithful, justice-seeking ways, working with people across the religious and ethnic spectrum in our metro area. They are linked up with similar organizations across the country, and they build relationships with people like Boston's mayor and city council, the police department, the governor, the attorney general, the leaders of the legislature who decide which bills get debated and voted on. They figure out how politics is played here in the Commonwealth and in the cities and towns and work within the system to affect change. This organization, some of you have heard of, is called the Greater Boston Interfaith Organization, or GBIO for short. Now, I personally have been keenly interested in having United Parish become a part of this organization even before I joined you back in 2013 because I believe this organization opens up the doors for us to have more of an influence in our justice work. It provides us with the organizational tools and strategies for making change. And it puts us in relationship with other dynamic faithful people in communities in our area, Jews, Muslims, Hindus, multi-ethnic communities. Together, we are stronger. And frankly, Joining with these other communities makes justice work a lot more fun, a lot more interesting, and a lot more effective. In his letter to the church in Corinth, Paul comments on the importance of diverse groups working together as one body. He says, indeed, the body does not consist of one member, but of many. If the whole body were an eye, where would the hearing be? If the whole body were hearing, where would the sense of smell be? But as it is, God arranged the members in the body, each one of them as God chose. If all were a single member, where would the body be? As it is, there are many members, yet one body. The eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need of you. Nor again, the head to the feet, I have no need of you. In fact, not only does each part of the body contribute towards the working of the whole, but they each help the other parts reach their full potential. The hands that control the wheelchair enable the eyes to see farther. The eyes that interpret sign language enable the brain to understand others. The diaphragm that supports our lungs enables our voices to carry further. By joining GBIO, we are enabling our sibling communities to use their gifts even more fully, and they ours. The work that our part of the body does will strengthen that of our local Brookline neighbors, such as Temple Sinai, Temple Beth Zion, Temple Ohave Shalom, and St. Paul's Episcopal Church and the Worker Circle. Together with them, we can work on local issues here in town like food insecurity and affordable housing. By joining together in this collective body that works towards justice, we are embracing our role as interdependent communities. We are embodying trust and love and service in a way that not only deepens our own sense of worthiness, but also strengthens the bonds of love in our communities. For the past seven plus years that I've been with United Parish, I've helped us meet people in GBIO and GBIO to meet people in United Parish through large and small group meetings, through protests, in actions with politicians. And now I believe is the time for us to move forward in joining this organization. This year, our Stretching into Justice team is urging us to make both the financial and organizing commitment to join others at GBIO in this important work. They've considered the questions we have about what joining will mean for us. They created a video for us all to consider prayerfully what it means to take this next step. And if you haven't watched it already, I encourage you to check it out. There's a link in your weekly emails and, if, and also on our, webs, our, our homepage of our website. If you can't watch all 43 minutes of it, you can quick jump to the questions that interest you. Also, our team has put out a FAQ sheet of some of the questions you may have that are also explained in the video. And this coming Tuesday evening, June 1st at 7 p.m., we will have an open forum on Zoom where you can come with your questions and talk to members of our stretching team and also some of our neighbors who are part of GBIO. It's important that we're all informed about this because on Sunday afternoon, June 13th in two weeks, 
we will bring this to a congregational vote at our all parish meeting. We believe that in joining GBIO, we will be opening new pathways for us to live our faith in exciting and life-changing ways in the greater Boston area. This kind of work is a big part of why Kent and I got excited about getting into ministry in the first place. Now you don't have to take your pastor's, word, pastor's words for it, however. Here are what members of our congregation are saying. All right, I'm excited to join GBIO. Part of the funds coming from different congregations is going toward real community organizers that get their foot in the door with legislatures, which turns the organization into something truly effective and also a way that we can interface with community organizers to improve our own justice making skills. And I'm excited about joining GBIO because my social action is based in my faith and I really want to join with other people of faith because I think we'll have a greater impact. I am very excited about joining GBIO um, in large part because I'm really excited about it giving the United Parish a chance to have an impact on the social justice issues outside of our walls in a way we never have been able to do before by joining with the 60 other religious and similar organizations that are members of GBIO in uh, uh, political and social outreach efforts that, uh, that can have a great impact. As members of GBIO, we will be putting into practice our belief in a strong multicultural community, and we will be doing our part to bend MLK's arc of the moral universe towards justice. Si se puede. Yes, we can. I'm excited for United Parish to join GBIO because it's a group that unites people of faith when there was so much division in the world. We should be members of GBIO. GBIO knows our legislators. Our legislators know we vote. And when we get together on this, we can improve the status of Boston all around. I am so excited and thrilled that United Parish will be looking into joining with GBIO, an organization I truly adore. Several years ago, I had the privilege of working with GBIO to get criminal justice reform enacted by the state legislature. I believe that the United Parish should continue to strive for a more just society by joining arms with the other faith communities in GBIO. I'm excited about United Parish joining GBIO because I think it gives us an opportunity to join a very diverse group of, of places of faith. It allows us to work on a common mission related to justice towards change. And of course, it strengthens our, our connections with local institutions, especially local religious institutions. And I'm excited for United Parish to join the Greater Boston Interfaith Organization so that we can join our voices together with other people of faith to work for justice. And here are what some of our immediate neighbors say about belonging to GBIO. Like United Parish, St. Paul's has long sought concrete ways to put our Christian faith into action, following Jesus' teaching in Matthew 25, to feed the hungry and thirsty, to welcome the stranger, to clothe the naked, to care for the sick, and to visit those in prison. But last year, as the twin pandemics of COVID and racism laid bare just how deep-rooted and complex so many injustices are, we knew that our action could and should go beyond treating symptoms. There are structural causes of hunger, homelessness, isolation, care and education disparities, and of course, racism. GBIO has given us tools, training, and most importantly, a community to help us learn about these systems of injustice and oppression, and to confront those in political and corporate power who benefit from them. I hope and pray that you will join all of us at GBIO. Thank you and God bless you. And I'm grateful to be part of GBIO because it's a way to meet many other people from other congregations in the greater Boston area and to build relationship 
and to make the world a much better place. And that means a great deal to me. And I'm so part, proud that our congregation is a part of GBIO because GBIO gives us hope, hope through connection, that we're all connected to so many other congregations throughout greater Boston to build a better society and a better commonwealth for all of us. Hello, United Parish. My name is Kathleen Patrone. I am the lead organizer, executive director of the Greater Boston Interfaith Organization. And on behalf of GBIO, we want to thank you for considering membership with GBIO. And we hope to celebrate and welcome you in as a member institution with our 60 other dues paying member institutions and join us in the righteous fight for justice in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. Uh, thank you so much and looking forward to celebrating with each and every one of you. And I'm really glad to be part of GBIO because it gives me a community to take action with um, to fight against racial injustices in our Commonwealth. Um, and I'm so excited for our United Parish to join us because I've seen the amazing organizing work that your parish can do uh, when you all jumped in and helped out with the GBIO racial justice campaign last year. And I'm grateful to be part of GBIO because it allows me, allows us as a community to strengthen our relationship with other faith communities. Personally for me, allows me to strengthen my relationship with other faith leaders and I know for members of my community, it means connecting with people of other faith communities. In the search and in the fight and in the work of building a greater Boston that really speaks to our shared values as people of faith. I am so excited that United Parish is joining GBIO and I give you a heartfelt welcome uh, to this work. I can't wait to work with you on these very important issues that we work together at GBIO. Thank you. And I'm thrilled for United Parish to join us in GBIO, to have more people of faith working together for justice in Brookline. We thank you and ask that you would join us in prayerfully considering what this next step will mean for us as a community, as we decide whether to join this organization, as we step into the tradition and the teaching of the prophets and of the pioneer and perfecter of our faith, Jesus Christ. And thank you for your time and interest and prayer, how we can keep stretching into justice in new, vibrant and life-changing ways. Amen. People say, amen. God, we offer our joys and our concerns, 
our burdens and our dreams. We offer these prayers aloud and in our hearts, and we invite you to offer your prayers in the chat. Just keep in mind the chat is public. Let us go to God together in prayer. Gracious God, this week we have felt the hot, humid air and the cool, refreshing breeze. We are reminded that even as some of us weep, others dance. And even as we celebrate, others mourn. God, we seek to feel your presence amidst all of these experiences of the human condition. We ask for your help. We offer you praise and we wonder in amazement at your work in the world. God, this morning we pray for our United Parish community. We offer prayers for our right 13 students, Stella, Sai, Jesse, Andrew, and Justin, who were wonderfully celebrated last Sunday, and for all of the volunteers who contributed to making their dinner so special. We pray for our graduating seniors, Priya, Sam, and Melanie, as they wrap up their final days of school and begin new adventures. We pray for their parents as they watch their children enter more fully into adulthood. We pray for a member awaiting knee surgery. We pray for our lay leaders and staff as they continue to plan how to gather safely in the fall. We look forward to that day when we might meet together again in our sanctuary. God, for our United Parish community, hear our prayer and guide us in your love. We pray for our neighbors and the communities just beyond our walls. We pray for Mary and Mike's daughter and son-in-law's foster son. He's been ruled available for adoption. We pray for his birth mother as she grieves, for his foster parents as they start their journey of faith and love and work towards adoption. We pray for all adoptees and foster children as they work through the trauma of family separation and for our nation that we may create policies that ensure that every child has a home. We pray for Pat's friend Doris who is dealing with the after effects of cancer surgery. We pray for Gwen's friend whose brother died suddenly and for another friend who is dealing with deep-seated problems in her marriage. We pray for a family gathering with Ben's cousin, Catherine, to celebrate her son's graduation. We offer continued prayers for my father, Bob, as he begins cancer treatment this month. And we pray for all of those in our unhoused community in Brookline, Boston, and beyond as the weather changes and they face new and different health hazards. We pray that we might continue to work towards a world where all have shelter. Oh God, for these people and places just beyond the walls of our church and our homes, hear our prayer and guide us in your love. We pray for the nation and the world around us, for the 10 people who died in a shooting at a San Jose rail yard. Paul Mejia, Taptejeep Singh, Adrian Baleza, Jose Hernandez III, Timothy Romo, Michael Rudometkin, Abdul Vahab Alagmindan, Lars Lane, Alex Fritch, and Samuel Cassidy. We pray for all of those who are affected by gun violence. We pray for our leaders that they might have the courage, the compassion, and the wisdom to enact policies that help end this cycle of violence. We pray for the people of Israel and Palestine as they face continual violence and hatred, anti-Semitism, Islamophobia, and oppression. 
We pray for leaders that help might that might help end the cycle of oppression that might use their wisdom and yearning for peace to create lasting change. We pray for the people of India and Brazil as they face continued COVID crises. We pray for our nation as we navigate reopening plans. We pray for those who are still immunocompromised as their fear begins to increase. May our compassion increase sevenfold. O oh God, for our nation and world around us, hear our prayer and guide us in your love. We pray all of these things and one thing more, for as Christ taught us, we are bold to pray together. Our Creator, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. I'm up on a part of the church that you don't normally see. I'm up here on our roof of this grand old building, which was originally built in the 1870s and then rebuilt in the 30s after a fire. We don't get up here very much and we don't think about it much, but a lot of what's important about our community is having a safe and good place to be. And maintaining this building has been a big part of that. Normally we have a member of the congregation talk right now about what the church means to them and why they support it and why they participate in it. Today I just want to say I'm grateful for a church that cherishes and knows how to do the words of Micah. To do justice, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with God. We seek to do that each and every day, every week in, week out, year in, year out, here at the United Parish in Brookline, just as our forebearers in our three founding congregations sought to do in their lifetimes. When you come to this online worship, you make this sacred space possible, this virtual sacred space, and we're looking forward to the day that we can all gather again in the sanctuary to worship again. We're looking at mid-September for that, and we're working to make sure we can do it safely and as efficiently and effectively as possible. For now, I just want to thank you for tuning in. I want to thank you for being a part of this community. I want to invite you perhaps even to put your own words of gratitude about this community in the chat right now so that others may see it when they watch this video. For now, I say thank you. Thank you for all you do to support the work of the United Parish in Brookline. And if you'd like to support this work further and jump in, there's a slide on your screen right now that can show you how to do that either by text, by mailing in a check online, any way you'd like to support our mission, we are grateful. No contribution is too small and none are too large. Thank you for being a part of this beautiful community. We are glad that you joined us today for worship, and we invite you to stay for coffee hour, which is on Zoom directly after this. You can come for as little time as you want just to say hello to people or stay for some conversation. Uh, we also want to encourage you to check out the morning meditation we have on Thursday mornings at 8 a.m. to 8.30. It's a nice way to reset yourself spiritually during the week. 
Um, this coming Sunday, we will be airing our Right 13 service on Zoom. Church will be on Zoom this coming Sunday, uh, June 6th. Our Right 13 dinner happened last Sunday. It was a really beautiful experience. We invite you to come and join and join in for some blessing and some celebration. Also, church school parents, um, this past week, you should have received an email from me about a three question survey um, to help us with our planning for church school in the fall. It would be really helpful for you. They'll take two minutes. There's just three questions so that we can have an idea of what sort of numbers we can expect. Um, so if you could please, please, please fill out the three question survey for us uh, when you have the chance. Just a reminder, as we mentioned in the sermon, there is the forum this Tuesday at 7 p.m. to learn more about what it will mean for us to join the Greater Boston Interfaith Organization. We encourage you to come with your questions, your enthusiasm, any concerns you have. Also on Friday night, our gathering team is holding another one of their first Fridays on Zoom, a wonderful fun party at 8 p.m. All are welcome to join. All of this information for linking up on Zoom is, are in, is in your emails. Um, also, just to say that stewardship pledges, we had asked for pledges to be made by May 20th. If you haven't made yours yet, we please encourage you to go ahead and make both your financial and service pledge. This helps us tremendously in planning for the year ahead. And if you're not able to make it yet, but you want to, uh, please let us know that as well. You can email stewardship at upbrookline.org and then we can hold a place for you. I'll also just say that we invite everyone to put on your calendar two Sundays from now, Sunday, June 13th, when we will have our all-parish meeting, where we will talk about some of the exciting new ways we are looking to live into God's reality and will in this year ahead. Okay, everybody, join us singing our closing hymn. Take my gifts and let me love you, God, First of all loved me, gave me light and food and shelter, gave me life and set me free. Now because your love has touched me, I have love to give away. Now the bread of love is rising, loves of love to Thank you for joining us today. I invite you now to go with this blessing. To remember that God is always sending us forward into new adventures, into new opportunities, into new challenges, and that together with God, we can do far more than we can possibly ask or even imagine. And the blessing of God, Creator, Christ, and Holy Spirit be with all of us this day and evermore. And let the people say, Amen. Amen. Go in peace. Take my gifts and let me love you, God, who first of all loved me. Gave me light and food and shelter, gave me life and set me free. Now because your 